Okay, the last day of naming. So, what questions do you have about naming? Can you go over that question 2.70? 2.70. In the reading. In the reading. Mm -hmm. Is that the one that should be four? No, that's another one. Okay. What is the name of that structure below? That pretty much has everything in it. In terms of the fun in terms of functional groups that aren't carbonyls. Okay, so let's do this from scratch. Let me one, two, three, four, then I'm a foxy. Foxy, then <coughs> Okay, I think that's the one. Okay, so let's look at this and say, okay, step one. Step one will be, let's identify all the functional groups that are in the molecule because we're going to have to choose one that is the highest priority. So what functional groups are in there? by Friday I should put everybody's name in my random in my random picker but I have another way of doing it we've got one two three four five six rows okay 31 one two three one so give me a functional group Okay, so there's an ether. So we have the ether functional group. 37. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't know your name. You. Taylor. No, behind you. Oh, yeah. Nicole. Nicole. Another functional group present. Actually, this is going to be called an amine. So when it's a nitrile is a C triple bond N group. A nitro is an NO2 group. So amine is just our regular nitrogen with, with um, alkyl groups attached to it. Okay. Do we want to yell out the next one? Save somebody some. So there's an alkyl halide which is the bromo and what's left not a, not a functional group alkyl group but not a functional group the alkene right so we've got the alkene so we have to determine what functional groups are present in the molecule so that we can use our chart to then <coughs> determine, well, who's got the highest priority in all of these? 
Okay, and that's that's why we need to know our functional groups. Now, I will put together by Friday because it just wasn't happening for today. I'm going to put together sort of a comprehensive problem set, practice problems. The you may say, well, you know, you did have some practice problems for alkanes that were in the Canvas folder, and you have some for cycloalkanes, which if they weren't in the folder, I'll put them there. But the problem is. I don't have any practice problems for previous 25 years on all of this in-depth naming. So I'm going to have to sit down and whip up some that are that I can name. Because I went to look and see if I have a program that will tell me the correct name just in case I'm wrong. And I don't know where that program went. Somehow it just vanished from my iPad. So, and I guess I was cheap and bought the other cheap program that doesn't tell me the name. So... I'm going to have to make sure I'm correct. So I'll do that for Friday because I know people have been saying, well, you know, it's not going to be a multiple choice test, so I'm going to have to name from scratch, I know, and I'm, I'm working on that. So hopefully on Friday I'll have those. But this is what we need to do. We need, our alka we need to know what, what uh, functional groups we have. So of these, which one's the highest on the priority? Oh, and I, and I said I was going to edit this thing, and I didn't get that done either. Sorry. The mean has the highest. The mean has the highest priority. So, one thing is they have an A Z A M E and an N, an A Z A N Y L, and this A Z and a Lilidine. I've actually never seen those names before, so I use the one in parentheses. Amine, imine, amino an M eno with an I. And the other thing that about this chart is that if we look at the top, I, I think I did this in the afternoon section, but it, because they had questions about it. Why are there two COOH groups? Number one and number two. And so the if it's in brackets it means that that's, an, that's when the COOH is attached to an alkyl, an alkane chain. And then the one without the brackets, it's attached to a ring. Okay, so they use that terminology in this chart. So. A bracket COOH is one that's attached to an alkane, a non-cyclic alkane. But a COOH that's attached to a ring doesn't have a bracket. I, I, I would have done it differently. I would have put the brackets for the rings, but again, they, they, they didn't ask me for my opinion. Um, so the COOR, the, the ester, the bracket COOR is when the ester is attached to a to an, a non-cyclic alkane, and the COOR is when it's attached to a cyclic alkane, like a cyclohexane ring. Then the other thing is, what is this? The greater than C double bond O with the bracket. All they're doing is they're just showing you this is what that is. So the greater than sign is supposed to show the two bonds to that carbon. And then the other then the other thing is what's a C what's a C with a bracket O O C with a bracket O. What they're trying to do is they're trying to write the structure using a keyboard instead of having to draw it out. So this would actually be a C double bonded to an O, O, C, double bonded to an O, like that. That's what this, that's what this structure translates to. And in, in other texts or online, you might see it written this way. There'd be a C with a bracket double bond O with an O 
and then another C with a double bond O in a bracket. So the idea here is that we're typing it out as opposed to drawing drawing out the entire structure. And so this is a way to this is a way to write the structure just using a keyboard. I think I said typewriter the other day, like what are those? But using a keyboard. So that's the double bond has a greater than and a less than sign because they're showing the double bonds attached to four things. So it's creative, but it is it does until you figure it out. And the bracket thing, like I said, um, and so what the bracket thing means is if you look at the aldehyde, which is a CHO. When, this, when the CHO, the C in brackets, is attached to a long chain, it's called an AL. And we did some of those on when, what's today, Wednesday? We did that on Monday. When the, if you had a cyclohexane ring mm -hmm. attached to a C double bond OH, this would be called actually cyclohexane carbaldehyde. So that's the difference between the bracket and no bracket. So a cyclohexane attached to a carboxylic acid would be cyclohexane carboxylic acid. And we haven't done much with cyclics, with cyclic alkanes, because we've been focusing more on the, on the non-cyclic alkanes, which is fine. I'll, whip up some problems with that, but that's what it means. Okay. All right, so that's what that, that's sort of the table, and I'll, I'm going to go through and kind of write that all out and give you an, a, another table that'll be a little bit clearer, including erasing the AZAMEs. Um, I can't change that in the book, because this is their figure, and I can't, I can't, well, I could delete it and repaste it, but... I won't. I'll just do it on paper. All right, back to the molecule at hand. So A and so the amine number one priority. So that means let's find the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the amine, and then also contains any other functional groups that can be part of the longest chain. And so, what kinds of groups are those? Double bonds, triple bonds, and carbon and uh, ketones. Those can be part of the longest chain. Now, where does the longest chain start? At the N. So the N is the longest chain here. So really, actually, it's this. So there's our longest chain in the molecule. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five. So the terse butyl is going to be a substituent. Remember, just because you see a group doesn't always mean that it's going to be a group. Because when you write the longest chain, it may go into that group. Okay, so now the question is what are our functional groups or what are our substituents? What kind of group is the ether? What would I call it? It's now a substituent, which means it's not the highest, the highest priority. And so that means we're going to use the names in the third column. And we did one of these on, on Monday. So what would that what's that CH3O going to be called? I'll give you a hint. It's an alkoxy group. So what is it called? Methoxy. So this is a methoxy group. What is this group called? Mm. 
Forty-one, two, three, four. Oh, you got saved. That's a tertiary butyl group. So, if I draw out all of my carbons, add hydrogens, it's a butyl group of four. It's the butyl group where the carbon that's attached is a tertiary carbon. So that's a tertiary butyl group. And of course the bromine is called bromo. And then the question is what do we do with the amine? So we look at the chart and we say the an N, this is a Oh, this is an N with nothing on it, with no hydrogens. So this is still this is going to be an amine. It's going to be the amine comes at the end of the name. Okay. So my longest chain is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine carbon chain. I have to start numbering at the nitrogen because it's the highest overall priority group. So this then becomes a pent one amine. So pent, why did I say pent? I should have said what? A non one amine is the nine carbon chain. Now I still have to say that it's a one amine because the amine might not be in the at the beginning of the chain. In this case it is. So the other question, well, let's just deal with the substituents. So now we would make an alphabetized list of, oh, sorry, let's start all over again. It's a non, it's a non ene. So this is a non four ene one. Amine. Sorry. Right, because the double bond has to be in that final part of the name. So this is a non four ene one amine. So let's put together the substituents. What are my substituents alphabetically? A two bromo. So we've got a two bromo, then what would come next? Your choices are methoxy or tersbutyl. Tersbutyl, because it's alphabetized on the B because it's terse with a hyphen. So 2-bromo, 3, tersh butyl and then what's the then it's a six methoxy non four ene one amine okay. now I'm missing a couple things But everybody with everybody with me so far? Uh, what am I missing? I'm missing the methyl and the ethyl group attaching attached to the nitrogen, which I'll take care of. And what else am I missing? Because I have the double bond. 
I should look at its stereochemistry, right? So what's the stereochemistry of this double bond? Trans. So again, go in, add in your hydrogens. And in this case, the hydrogens are opposite. First of all, I can name it cis or trans because the double bond on one side has non-alkyl or non-hydrogen hydrogen group. On the other side, hydrogen, non-hydrogen group. So since I have the two hydrogens on the two carbons, the two different carbons, it can be cis or trans. So this is going to be trans. Now, what do I do with the ethyl and the methyl group that are attached to nitrogen? Well, in order to tell you that those eth that ethyl and that methyl group is attached to nitrogen, I'm going to put this in brackets and it comes at the beginning. So what happens is, is this, I say I have a N-ethyl and an N-methyl group. And what the N tells you is the N tells you that those are the groups that are attached to the nitrogen. Between three. Between three and four. Okay. So how does that change the name? That makes it a non three ene, but it's still trans. Minimal damage there. Mm. So when you're naming a means you you can either use you can either say that you have and I haven't looked at their name yet because their name's probably going to be completely busted to compare it to what I wrote but the amine has to have the ends to tell what the alkyl groups are oh I'm sure it does that's okay. what I said that's why I haven't even looked at it to okay. see how it's blown up I would accept I would accept if all the parts are there, yes. Because okay. what did they do? Did they call it a non did they call it a non ene and then put like one amino, one N methyl and N ethyl and methyl amino? Yeah, they have the ethyl and the methyl in the middle. Oh. I always put them at the end. I don't care where they're at as long as they're there. Is that it? Is that the only thing that I got wrong? That's not bad. Now you're going, well, you got that wrong. How are we supposed to get? Again, it's about the parts at this point. So where it is, if it's at the beginning or in the middle, that's fine. They also use, I think I wrote it down, the EZ. Um... Well, OK, so yeah, now that I moved that, now that I moved the bond from four and five to three to three and four, trans is no longer an option because on carbon three we've got this group and this group and then over here we've got the third alkyl group. So when I move the double bond between three and four, I now have three non-hydrogen groups so I have to use the easy format. So this, in this case, in this case if I'm looking at carbon three, there's a carbon versus There's a carbon, carbon versus carbon. And then this carbon has three carbons attached to it, while this carbon has basically bromine. I don't care what else, because the bromine wins. So that puts this group right here as the high priority group. And then on this side, anything versus hydrogen's high priority, they're opposite. So this would be even. So those are all the parts that are necessary.
So let's see what they had. E, two bromo, three terch butyl, N ethyl. N ethyl, six methoxy, N methyl, non three E and a one amine. I think they're they're probably using even a newer system than I remember. Because I don't remember breaking up the ends putting them all together so that way you know what's attached to the nitrogen. So, But the key thing is the end, that's what tells you what is attached. And then the longest carbon chain becomes the parent chain. So that's not bad. I would accept that. Right. So this gets ugly really quickly, right? Because now we've got all these different functional groups you're going to have this to work with because not, you know, we still got a lot of stuff to put in our heads. So putting all this is not going to be efficient. So we can use this to try and to help us with the names. But what the thing, first thing you need to do is to know what the functional groups are to be able to identify them. All right. Is the what? The ether. So an ether group is called an alkoxy group. It's actually the OR group that's second from the bottom. The OR group that's second from the bottom is the ether. Because there's X, which is a halogen. There's R, which is any alkyl group. And then there's OR, which is... Basically, you take that OR and you attach it to a longest chain, it becomes the ether. What else? Okay, so match the match the compounds with the correct IUPAC name. So let's take a number, what are the, what are the names? Let me just see what the name is. Okay, so what they did was, well they say they're all pence. So then the numbering scheme So, so what they did here was they gave the amine group the priority in terms of the last being the last part of the name. But they gave the alkene then, the alkene's got to be part of the longest chain. So when they're, so when they're numbering these, let me pull up the, let's see, so it goes... Is that the right? Is that so? What they said, what they, what they're doing here is they're saying, okay, we have an alkene, so we've got to make this the longest carbon chain. The carbon chain has to include the alkene because it can't include both the nitrogen and the alkene. So what they're saying here is this is the longest chain, and then I'm going to number it one, two, three, four, and five. So that's what's going to make this a pent one in. And so then they're saying, okay, it's a pent one in. And now we're going to say it's a two amine because that's where the amine group is. It still has the highest priority, so it's still coming at the end. And so now what they're and so now what they're doing is they're saying, okay. 
I'm going to break the two groups up on the nitrogen and I'm going to alphabetize them but I'm going to put an N in front of them. So in this case what we really have are three substituents that have to come before the name. We have a methyl, an N-methyl, and an ethyl. So this is going to be an N-ethyl, then an I don't know which one would come first, methyl or ethyl. Methyl or N-methyl, probably we'll say N-methyl. Then N-methyl, and then methyl. I probably got that reversed, right? In the name. Just says dimethyl. Well, I'm going to say dimethyl in the... There's a methyl that's one methyl with the methyl with the N. I'm just, I'm just ranting about the IUPAC system here. We're going to do it my way. So what's the number for the N-ethyl? doesn't matter because it's a, it tells me it's 2-amine. And then N-methyl and then the methyl's at 3. So when you have an N, you don't have to put a number in front of it because it knows, it knows that it's the amine that's at carbon 2. What about Sure. So, so I'm giving you kind of a little bit of wiggle room here so that if I was dumb enough to ask this type of a problem on the test where there were more than one answer that I would accept, I will accept more than one answer. It's just all the parts got to be there. So this is why I like taking, and this is why I would be saying that it's in bracket, that it's an N ethyl and methyl together, because I can't say it's a dimethyl because one of them has an N in front of them. So what they do, put the N in front of the dimethyl. So you assume, oh well, one of those methyls goes with the N, and one of those methyls doesn't. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. So anytime you want to put an alkyl group to the nitrogen, put an N in front of it. And don't combine. I know that violates the rules, but that's okay. So I just have a quick question. So should we add the on that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The key is there's an N in front of whatever group. So if I'm going back, again, if I'm going back, I'm going to write a five carbon chain. Between carbons one and two, I'm going to put a double bond. Then at carbon two, I'm going to put a nitrogen, just a nitrogen. Then when I see the three methyl, I'm going to put a methyl group on carbon three. And when I see the N-ethyl, I'm going to put an ethyl group on nitrogen. And when I see the N-methyl, I'm going to put a, a methyl group on the nitrogen. So, yeah, I don't quite understand the way they did it otherwise, but that's okay. All right, what was the next question? Oh, 2.84. Oops. Seven. What is that? Oh, the degrees of unsaturation. Calculate the degree of the index of hydrogen deficiency, which I call the degrees of unsaturation. Um, for the molecule C five H six BrCl. Oh God, we got halogens in there. So there's a formula for this, right? It takes like nitrogens to the half. You take half a nitrogen. and So first of all, what, what is this? So this is actually what we call the degrees of unsaturation. When we get to next semester, 
um, well, we don't even have to get the next semester. If I have an alkane, this is called a saturated molecule. All carbon, all non-cyclic molecules that have just carbon-carbon bonds in them are saturated, which means they have the maximum number of hydrogens per carbon. So here's one that's perf that has maximum number of hydrogens per carbon. This is C2H6, which if I reduce that down to a formula, it's CnH2n plus 2. So in a saturated molecule, you will always have 2 times the number of carbons plus 2, plus an extra 2. That makes it saturated. And if you think about that, every carbon is going to have like a CH2, except if it's at the end, we're going to have a CH3. And so that's where that comes from. Unsaturated means I've now done something to reduce that number from 2n or from 2n plus 2 to 2n. And there's many things I can do. What if I wrote the carbon with a double bond? C2H4. Now it's CnH2n. So I've lost two hydrogens. So this is unsaturated. And for the carbon, and for a ring, if I made a cyclohexane ring, this would be C6H12. A ring also causes a loss of saturation. So that now it's CnH2n. So anytime you have a ring, or a multiple bond, you end up with a losing basically two hydrogens from the maximum number of hydrogens that you can have. So that's what unsaturated means, that you have less than the maximum number of hydrogens. And we hear about saturated and unsaturated in like normal life all the time. In normal, in normal life, what we have is we have things called, we have these long-chained carboxylic acids, which are fatty acids, and if there's no double bond in them, they're a saturated fatty acid. And if there's a double bond in them, they're a, poly, or they're a unsaturated. And then if there's two double bonds in them, they're a polyunsaturated fat or fatty acid. What makes them a fat is if I get rid of this hydrogen and I now attach that to this three carbon um, alcohol and I make what's called a triester, now I have basically what's called a triglyceride or a fat or an oil. So saturated, straight chain carbons, I think those are the bad ones that'll kill you. Polyunsaturated are, well, unsaturated or polyunsaturated have double bonds in them. And depending, they're, they may or may not be okay. If it's a, like, one of, my, one of the research projects that students, the students looking at now is, has a PUFA. <laughs> PUFA is a polyunsaturated fatty acid. So that just means it's got two double bonds in it. And what happens, it reacts with oxygen and forms radicals. And whenever you have radicals, bad things happen in life and in chemistry. But we'll talk about radicals later. Um, so we, we have these terms. And then you might say, well, where does partially, partially, um, the partially hydrogenated fatty acids, because those are like deadly. Where do they come from? Well, they come from taking a double bond and trying to add two hydrogens add, added to them. And if you don't quite hydrogenate everything, then you end up with a partially hydrogenated one. Right? So in food chemistry, this is these saturated, unsaturated terms are used. What we're interested in with the saturated, unsaturated is if I know the formula of the molecule, I know how many rings or double bond or rings or multiple bonds I have. 
And next semester, that's going to be critical because that'll let me figure out the structure. So back to the problem. Because I don't because I don't remember the formula. I have my own formula that I use. So let me just talk you through that. Because you can just find the formula and add it up. So I've got a C5H6. So we've got C5H6BRCL. Okay. My formula is, because I don't deal with nitrogens, so my formula is we take the degrees of the whatever, index of hydrogen deficiency is going to equal the number of carbons minus one half the number of hydrogens plus one. That's my, that's my formula that I use. So with this one, what happens to the hydro, what happens to the halogens? Well, let's think about that. So halogens just occupy a place where a hydrogen would normally be, right? Same thing would be true for an oxygen. It's occupying a place where the hydrogen would normally be. Only oxygen doesn't show up in any of the formulas. So we ignore it. But in this case, I've got five hydrogens minus one half the number of hydrogens, but I've got six hydrogens, but really the bromine and the chlorine are going to be treated as if they're hydrogens. So that means I've got eight plus one. So in this case, we've got five minus four plus one uh, gives me two. So this molecule would have two degrees of unsaturation. That means that it could have a ring and another ring. It could have two rings. It could so it could be one of those fused systems. It could have two double bonds. It could have a ring and a double bond. Or it could have a triple bond. Because a triple bond counts as two degrees of unsaturation or two hydrogen deficiencies. I hope that's the answer. There's one answer where it's supposed to be four, and that they don't they have it like eight. I don't know what formula they're using. And that happens. I I've started to look at how I'm going to tabulate the these scores into the given these mistakes, I'm I'm I haven't transferred them over to Canvas yet. I'm still thinking about that. Because what I'll probably do is transfer the raw score. And then if there were some, like, it asked for a number and you wrote it out, I have that so I can double check on that. So if it was like five numerically and you wrote five, you, you're correct. But you're probably going to have to tell me that. You're probably going to have to give me a list of the ones that it marked wrong, even though you got them right, because then I'll go back and I'll look at the spreadsheet and take care of it. Okay. So that's what the degrees of unsaturation are about. So if, and there's a technique called mass spectrometry that will give us the molecular form, that will give us the molecular weight of the molecule. And from that molecular weight, I can narrow down the list of formulas pretty well. Like there's only so many formulas that add up to 154. Mm. So as I'm going through that list, if I can find the right formula, then in that formula immediately I know, hey, these are the possibilities in this structure. And then I'm going to use my other techniques that you'll learn about next semester to try and figure out what it is. So that's where the degrees of unsaturation come into play. And that's where the saturated and unsaturated terms are. Hydrocarbons can either be saturated or unsaturated. Alkanes, saturated. Alkenes, alkynes, and cyclos, unsaturated. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? If you, if you have them, email them to me, and I'll put them up on the discussion board. I will put together, I'll, 
I had a lot of stuff to not do by Friday. I will redo this chart so it makes a little bit more sense. And I will put together some problems. I've already set up the f chapter three, which is going to be interesting how chapter three works. But now we're going to start talking about mechanisms of reactions without actually talking about reactions. So we're going to be looking at different mechanisms, different types of reactions, and it's going to be kind of a prelude into the reactions that we're going to see. So that's, that's what's in the chapter for um, three point something to three point something for Friday. So again, we'll start with questions. I may have more lecture than, than questions. So. If you have any, send them to me, um, and I will answer them and put them up.